So, yeah, I was just showing uh, some of the folks here from Brazil the EP Game Change Fibers, the blend ones uh -huh. that I first saw. Uh, it was Ben Firminski from the Fly Fishing Show. Okay. He was uh, in Mamirawa back in 2018. So I guided him. He caught so many fish, that guy. So lucky. And oh, also yeah? great fisherman. Yeah, great fisherman as well. And uh, at, at the end of the, the, the week, he, he, he showed it to us. Look, this is a, is a new product from Enrico, these fibers. And he gave some, some of us, some, some, it, some of it to us, the guides. It was great, great fibers. Love to tie the big flies with them, and especially the black ones for the the arapaima are, are really good because well, those, those, those fibers are a specific design for those uh, big flies, for those uh, very vicious uh, fish. Let's put it this way. So really, they can withstand the you know the aggressivity of those fish, and you know because those fish they destroy pretty much anything. But, oh yeah. Uh, Well, the idea of the uh, the idea of the fibers is very simple. It's uh, it's not really complicated. Uh, they those fish they cannot really destroy a fly when it comes to natural materials because with their feet they can destroy a natural bobtail the feathers. They they chop it up. But yep. what happen what happen is with uh, with the fibers when they go and grab the fly. Uh, basically, what happened is that the fibers goes in between their teeth, so that's why they cannot really chop it up the fibers. So obviously, the fiber is a little bit tougher than the feathers. Don't get me wrong, but when they grab the fly, so those fibers basically goes in between their teeth. You know, it's the same thing like we do when we eat. After we eat, we, we floss because we want to clean what we have in between. So that Perfect. happened with uh, with those fish as well. So. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, just let's just wait a little bit more. It's just two <laughs> minutes went, went by, and like that's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can repeat the same question, I can don't mind how to tell no. you a little bit more about it. That's so, sure. so, so, so when I first uh saw your products, it was about I, I believe I started fly fishing not too long ago, about uh 10 to 11 years ago and i and i bought some from the the brazilian the fly, uh, fly shop brazil and great fly tire the, the owner uh Thiago, and it was it was tying peanut butters for the snooks where he mm -hmm. lives in he lives in the south 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 part of brazil yeah i know If, i know where he lives Yeah, yeah. So that, that Italian guy, I call him Italian. He's another. Oh he's yeah. Italian. He's <laughs> not. He's not Brazilian. He's, he's Italian. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't want to admit that to me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. So I just basically started learning how to tie materials, your your materials, your flies, with the the DEP fibers from him on his YouTube videos. So started really to like them, and I started using them in the southeast part of what's where I live, and mostly fish for a peacock bass that ranges from about 10 pounds, the blue mm -hmm. species. This is great, great time. Yeah, what, this, yeah. where, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Where, where are you located? Where do you live? I'm located in Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais state. That's in the mm -hmm. southeast, one of the uh, southeast, southeast Brazil, yeah. Southeast, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you have a, you have access to all the fishery, or yeah, uh, do yeah. you have access to rivers and? Uh... Yes, so so nearby here, um, let's say 230, 250 kilometers from here, we have a, a good spot. That's the the Tres Maria City, and in Tres Maria City, there's a big reservoir which mm -hmm. is populated by a bunch of fish, but mainly we fish for peacock bass, the yellow and the blue one, which is a little bit bigger. So the yellow would breach about eight pounds tops mm -hmm, and the blue mm -hmm. one, 10 pounds. And there is the, the river uh, and we would fish for Golden Dorado and Matrichans. Back in the day, there was a huge amount of big sized Golden Dorados, but as well as close to cities. And, you know, there's a lot of predatory fisheries. So they, they, they got smaller and smaller. They got smaller, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but when the the spawning season comes comes near october and it's sunny time gets a little bit of rain the big ones 
start to migrate because there's also a river nearby that is not dammed. So that's a key time of the year to go fish for these, these golden dorados. Mm -hmm. And they allow catch and release. So when it doesn't get muddy, you, you still have a pretty good chance to catch a big one. And of course, you got to go with a sinking line on this specific river and go a little bit deeper. Use big, big flies. It's not as some rivers that I've, I've seen that you can use smaller flies to catch golden dorado. Right. You got to use really big ones because they're after Matrin Shans, the size. And when you catch a smaller Dorado, they'll just chop them in a half. It's, it's crazy. The big ones is crazy there. But it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's a different species from the, the, the ones in Argentina as well as the ones in, in Tismani, and, Bolivia. And why, and so. why, why is different? It's because geographic. It's geographic uh, barrier. It's just a little bit different in the in the scale, amount of scales in the lateral scales. Okay. The amount, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, there's a little uh, beak in the morphology of them. It's just a little bit different. So yeah. totally different, to totally different species. Yeah, it's a different species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's pretty cool. So should we get started? Yeah, anytime. I'm, I'm ready. Let's hit it. So for the audience that's that's uh, listening and in, in seeing us right now, could you give us a little bit of your feedback uh, as when you started uh, to fish or if it was fly fishing right away. Could you tell us a little bit about that, about yourself? Um, sure. Well, I started fishing probably when I was uh, five years old with my father. And uh, obviously it was not fly fishing in those days. Uh, we, you know, I learned bait fishing pretty much. Uh, go fishing, catch some fish, and put fish on the table. You know, we're talking about 50 plus years ago. It wasn't I yesterday. So until um, probably I was, um, I would say, uh, in the 20s, still was doing that kind of fishing. And then uh, when uh, six years later, when I moved in the United States, so that's when I started fly fishing. Okay. Because I did not have a, uh, a knowledge of fly fishing until I got in the United States. Perfect. My, my... So let, let me just jump right and interrupt you for a bit. Uh, what made you move to the to the United States? Was it job related or? No, it, it was a wife related. <laughs> <laughs> Same as Simon. I interviewed Simon last week, and he said, "Well, I moved it to the United States." He said, "Wife." <laughs> It was wife related. It was wife related. So, Fantastic. It's you know it's 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 one of those things. So that, that's yeah. okay. Uh, I'm happy. So that's great. And uh, that's when I did my move. I was 26 years when I moved in the United States. And again, until then, I didn't have a, a clear knowledge about fly fishing. I think you know I knew a little bit about it, but I had no no clue. I had no idea what's for it. So I learned over here, basically in the United States. Perfect. Did the where did you move in when you first got into the U.S.? I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, what city did you move into when in you New got York. to the, New York? City. New York, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And I still live in New York City. Perfect. Did you? Yeah. Uh, it was a uh, who first uh, you know introduced fly fishing to you? Was it a specific friend of you that you've met Not somewhere? Not really, not really. Uh, I introduced the fly fishing pretty much to myself. You know, a lot of people, they don't believe in me, but that's the truth. Uh, because there was, I didn't have that many friends those days, you know, and especially on the fly fishing uh, family, it's kind of hard uh, to find that in those days, not everybody was a fly fishing. Yeah. So uh, I did pretty much in my own. You know, through books and magazines and some videotape, which was kind of difficult to find those videotapes those days as well. Uh, and that's how that's how I get started, pretty much. And uh, and then of course, you know, after year, you know, first year, second year, and so forth and so on. Then you start to, I started to know some people out there, uh, get to know people. You know, start to build up some friendship. But again, you know, I, I did everything in my own pretty much. Uh, you know, Fantastic. Trial, trial and error, let's put it this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how did fly fishing appear to you the first time? Was it a movie? 
uh, River runs through it, or what was no, it? When did you just first <laughs> saw it? And yeah. No, as as I say that uh, that was uh, mid '80s, probably around '85, '86. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was before. The... It was before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and that's when I, you know, I again I knew about fly fishing, and then, you know, I also I do hunting for small birds, you know, and small birds. Nice. And, um, you know, those days on the, you know, Field and Stream magazine, every once in a while, they will put like an article about fly fishing. So and that's when I pretty much just start to get, you know, in, you know, catch a lot of interest into it. And I wanted to do it. So when you started, uh, what species did you uh, first target it for? Uh, trout. I was fishing for trout. You know, many people... Uh, I'm sure they don't know that when I started uh, my career on fly fishing, uh, it was basically for trout. I learned fly fishing, fishing for trout. And nothing, nothing in salt water. That came later. But first, of my approach was trout. Yeah, I did, I did believe it was salt water at first as no, well. No, yeah, not yep. at okay. all. Okay, cool. Uh, and then, uh, as for fly tying, was it near those days uh, at the beginning or when well, was it um so when uh when i first started fly fishing of course i did buy a, a fly rod a reel and a fly line and whatever fly whatever flies the world they're available in like a kit or something like that. there wasn't really nobody can give me an indication or guide me and of course yeah, I was a casting, but I didn't know what to do it. I didn't, I didn't know if it was the right cast. I didn't know if it was the right fly. I had no clue, no idea. So, and then I have to start to really put my brain into it again with, my, you know, reading magazine and books. And then uh, after I start to reading uh, in magazine and books and see some videotapes, I realized that those flies that, were, that I bought, it, they will never catch any fish. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I mean, the period, because there was nothing that would really resemble it, what I needed. So that's when I say, okay, you know what? I think I, I want to start to tie flies. And, uh, you know, I, I love to do things with my hand and put my brain into it. So I took as a challenge, let's do this. Perfect. Way, Perfect. As a challenge, you know, okay, how am I going to fool the fish? you know, tie a couple of feathers in a hook. And I, I want to see how that really works. Yes, so that, yes. That's pretty much is, you know, wasn't my start. And of course, in the beginning, you don't know what you're doing. And it's something like, okay, you know what? I got to do it. You know, I can Yeah, just, yeah, just know, go for I, it. I cannot just uh, put this thing on the side and I go shooting birds again. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I got <laughs> So I'm going to have to make that happen. And of course, again, you know, it was a trial and error and then going yeah. fishing and learning the technique with the trout. And believe it or not, I started trout with. Uh... Just a little stop there. We had was a fishing, you know, we just we just we just had a little you started. We had a little glitch and the, stopped there. Yep. there. There was a little a little glint. I'm sorry about that. That's fine. That's so, fine. fine. So basically, um, you know, basically you, you put in my head, I got to do it. So, and, and again, you know, if you put your head if, in, and you think, my father always say that to me this, you know, son, you know, in life, everybody has a problem. But in reality, you know, the truth of the matter is that the problem that everybody has is not really a problem. I say, I don't understand that. You know, explain that to me. Yeah. You see, the problem is a problem. Now, you're going to have to resolve the problem. Okay? So, you're going to sit down, relax, take it easy, and start to think about it. Okay, I have this problem. How am I going to resolve this problem? And you'll do it. So, it's the same thing with fly fishing. Okay, why do I don't catch this trout? This trout you know, he's showing me my, you know, his face and he's laughing at me and I cannot get it. Well, I have to figure out that. 
So find a solution. That's how pretty much, you know, the whole thing really works. When, when you first started Time Flies, did you, did you, uh, there was visas available for purchase? Back then? Yes, there Already? was a yep. visa available. And uh, those days there was the Thompson Vise, which is uh, available, I think, these days as well, but I don't think so. But, but what I did, the pretty much, uh, I went to a, a local Orvis uh, shop in town in Manhattan, and then I spoke with the fellow that was there and uh, told him what I wanted to do it. And the guy, uh, you know, the guy was, uh, you know, kind of honest to me. I said, listen, you know, I can sell you a kit, okay? You go home and you start to, you know, to forcing around, but whatever is on the kit is not really what you're going to be using in the future. So, okay, listen, you know, I understand, you know, uh, fly fishing is a costly uh, sport, but, you know, don't kill me, you know what I mean? <laughs> just give him whatever he <laughs> needs. Take it easy, take it right, easy at take it first. Easy. You know, just, you know, just, you know, you know, sell it to me what I really need. And the, the guy was pretty, pretty honest. You know, I still remember his name, uh, Richard. What was and, uh Richard, you know, he, set, he set me up and yeah. uh, with advice, a decent advice, and uh, he gave me uh, the materials according to the flies that I needed to, to get started. You know, like uh, the woolly burger, the nymph, you know, and the uh, the other type of streamers like a Holberg. That probably a lot of people that don't even know what this name of Holberg is is a very famous streamer. Pardon, God knows how old that is. So that's how I really started. And until I really, I accomplish, you know, my task and with the trout. Perfect. Uh, so let's, let's, let's get back into that topic. Uh, as a beginner fly tire, what piece of advice would you give uh, to uh, someone who's beginning to tie flies? Um, would be, for example, buy certain materials for to tie specific flies, get good at it get some skills to begin with, with certain patterns and then move on. Would that be your piece of advice or there's, there's something else to it that you would like to, yeah. My advice is, uh, you know, rather if it's a fresh water or salt water, in the beginning, you should do like I did it. You know, don't buy a kit. A kit is not going to do any good for you because in a kit you'll find the, what they're giving to you. So, you you know, you really need to know And this, these days, there is a lot of people around that can help you. A, a new, a, you know, a, a beginners can help and everybody can give you good advice. It depends on what you want to fish for. Let's say, let's say you want to fish it for trout, and then you're going to have to learn and understand what is the life cycle of the insect on a trout if you want to go with the dry flies. And if you want to go with, with streamers, it's the same thing as well with, uh, with the nymphs. So what I'm saying in the beginning is um, you don't need to spend a lot of money. There is a decent vices out there, you know, that they don't cost an arm and a leg. And there is a decent materials out there. So my advice is that go to a, a fly shop and talk to the lo your local fly shop <clears throat> and be honest, you know, with them and you ask them to be honest with you more than anything else you know like i did it okay i understand this sport is not you know is an expensive sport but i am a beginner you know don't kill me you know don't yeah. sell me what you want to sell me and then at the end i'm not gonna use it you, yeah you know, perfect you understand what i'm saying yes because, perfect. Yeah. because what happened is if you really like you know fly fishing or you like this sport Eventually, you're going you're gonna to do it. You're going to make it. You're going to learn it. Yeah. So if somebody, you know, whoever, fly shop owner or whatever, is going to sell to you something that you don't need it, eventually in time, you will learn it. And you will remember, you know, that guy really did me the job. You know what I mean? Guess what? I'm not going to go to, exactly. you know, to buy anything from his place and I will bet mouth him for the rest of my life. You know, that's the way it is. That's so the way it is. My exactly. advice is that, you know, spend a little, you know, couple of dollars to get the right vice, the right tools, and you don't need to buy a lot of tools. You need these scissors and, you know, and a whip finish and 
the, the you know the, the basics you know and bobbing, that's what you need yeah, yeah, right just the exactly basic and, the stuff, bobbing, yeah. right? and then of course you know where, what you do is you know don't try to tie everything in creation okay where do you want to start all right i want to start the nymph here's there's nymph okay let me buy the materials specific for the here's there's nymph there and you go do i want to die yeah what do i want to tie the woolly bugger okay let me see Look at the recipe. There is a, so many recipe on, on the internet. Look the recipe and then you know already the materials that are involved in the fly. Hey, don't run. Don't run. Don't rush. You know, baby steps. You learn one fly at a time. Don't, you know, don't do like I did. You know, I did a big mistake because I didn't know about that. You yeah. know, when I learned about the modular minnow, those days when I first started, I read and read the modular minnow. Uh, this is a it's a stream of pattern you know that catch tons of fish very very productive fly so okay this is the flies i'm making a tie so i bought the materials involved to the model of me you know, don't get me wrong but it yeah. was a nightmare you know to match the you know the wings on the turkey quill to for the you know for the tail and then the wing and spinning the hair that's in, you know for a beginner that is a, that's it's too much difficult that's too much do yeah. that Because basically there was nobody, for instance, to tell me that how to pair the wings, you know, with the with the turkey wing, or Don't there was no nobody answers. tell me that, you know, listen, spinning, you know, spinning deer hair. If you want to spin the deer hair over a thread base hook, it's a nightmare. You can never do that. But if you do spin a deer hair on a bare shank hook, that's just like a day and night. But again, there was nobody telling me that. So it took me about a month before I figure out my own that okay, you know what? This is the way you have to be done. Fantastic. So that's that's my suggestion too. That's that's perfect. Uh, and and it it's also th those baby steps that you've mentioned they're going to help uh, build a, a knowledgeable base uh to improve your fly tying as you move forward, right? Correct. So because, so yeah, it's be, because basically that, you know, that is a, is your base. You know, when you build a house, what do you do? Where do you start it? On the foundation, right? Yeah. So learn how to tie a nymph. You know, learn how to tie a streamer. Learn how to tie a dry fly. It doesn't matter what fly, but learn how to do. And then you're going in your book, in your magazine, you read the area where you're going, okay, I'm going to need this nymph, I need this thing. Let me buy the materials to tie those specific flies. But you learn the basics, right? If it's a nymph, a streamer, or a dry form. Fantastic, fantastic. So, and from that point, uh, what did you do back then as a, a work-wise? Were you working in something? Uh, what did you do back then? My professional was a chef. So I was a, I was a chef in a hotel. So that was a, my, my original profession. It's Italian cuisine was was yes. it? Well, yeah. pretty much, pretty much everything. I can even cook Bra Brazilian. So I mean. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I that's can nice. Do that. <laughs> right, fantastic. I can when do you that. when you come down here, you're invited for our uh, family reunion where we put a big fire and we'll have a lot of barbecue. You so, got that? I mean, oh I yeah, yeah. You and your son, Dan. I think the I family. Do a pretty good job. <laughs> well, we're going to do a pretty good job. We're going to test, test your eating skills on, on beef and all sorts uh, of meat. Oh, believe me, it will be delicious. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, when did you, if you made a whole transition, or when did you start thinking, oh, okay, this industry, uh, I'd like to, to participate on it. I'd like to invest on it and build a brand. When did that pop up and how did it pop up? Well, uh, you know, going back when I started, um, and then you you accomplish what you started because you 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 have the passion. You know, I always had the the passion of the fishing, hunting for small birds, and uh, it be on the outdoor. So that always was my passion. So once I learned the fly, you know, the fly fishing for trout, and and then I. You know, I live here in uh, Queens, which is one of the borders of, of uh, New York. And basically, I live here on the bay. You know, if, if I go in my own backyard, it's the bay. So I have, 
I have a stripers, I got bluefish, we, you know, we got bonitas, we do well with those fish. Yeah. So, as, you know, uh, when I started that, basically I started and I had the clever idea, which was to have my own little fly shop. So I started with the fly shop. I wanted but, to have a fly shop. You when, know, because, when was that? Do you recall the year that you began that the fly shop? That was back uh, late 90. Late 90s. Late 90. Okay. That's when I started with the it, right here in town. But it wasn't a really a full fly shop. It was a, something for me to play with it, you know. Yeah. Having, having materials and you know, some hooks, you know, whatever was related to tying a fly. Because that was my passion. And Fantastic. then little by little, you know, I grew this shop. And, but again, I was concentrating mainly on flying time, you know, and the, the terminal tackle, which is whatever you need, the tippet, the, the, the uh, you know, split lead and, uh, and the fly line. But I was not really heavy on you know, fly, uh, fly rods or fly reels. And, I, you know, I had some, but... I wasn't mainly concentrating on the fly tying. In fact, they, all, all the people that will come to the shop, basically, just to give an idea, if I had a, if those days airline dubbing had it, um, 36 colors of uh, airs uh, dubbing, well, I, I cut all the 36 colors. I wasn't uh, getting one of these or two of those and three of that. So the people that really, the, you know, my, the client I had those days, they were very happy to come to see me because I have all the colors that they needed. You had the rather, stuff. Right. Rather if it was a bobtail, rather if it was a deer hair and, and uh, feathers and, and dry neck and so forth and so on. Was it, was it hard to begin those relationships with uh, suppliers and stuff at the beginning? Those Did days, you... uh, not really, because those days there was um, – it was a very small uh, family, the industry, yeah. and there was that kind of trust. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to give an idea, um, you know that that's as a is something I will never, I will never, uh, I will never forget that. So I, my client, they asked me for uh, you know wood wood duck uh, lemon uh, feathers, you know, to tie one of the classic Cuskill dry flies. And those feathers are very expensive. And there is a maybe 10 feathers. Those days, there was a 10 feathers, 12 feathers in a pack. Very expensive. So guess what? So I call the airline. I say, I needed this feather. Give me the feathers. And um, I say, okay, no problem. One, about a week later, I get these feathers and I get a bill. The guy never asked me, you know, give, you know, send me the money. Then send me the money that. first. It was no, just stress. Never. Word. Never. Word. And then uh, I was kind of shocked. You know, I said, Jesus, you know. Yeah. And then, uh, and I remember the bill was uh, about all together with the Fed. You know, it was all fancy feathers I needed. Yeah. It was about around $370, $380. And, you know, those days for me, <laughs> that was like a, you know, substantial amount of money. So yeah. when I go home and I tell that to my wife, I said, you know, now I'm going to have to pay this guy. I'm going to have to send him a check for $380. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. <laughs> and she said, don't worry. Don't worry. You'll make it. You'll send him the money. And for me, that was something that, I mean, how can you really, you know, and I say as it is, how can you screw up a person Oh, yeah. That when he's doing that to you, just, to, you know, how can you do that? There's no way. You know? yeah. 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 So, and that's the way the relations, you know, started those days. It was more, you know, your words is a words and you yeah. doing business and you're doing the right way. You know, there is yeah. no yeah. screwing around. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much, you know, how I get started on that. And until uh, the time came, you know, to put my hands in the soul work. And that Fantastic. Was, you know. So the the shop did how long did that go for? Um it didn't really go for a long time because I felt like I wasn't tied up in a fly shop. Yeah. Uh especially, you know, I started to tie flies and sell flies in, in, in the shop. Obviously I cannot do that by myself. Yeah. You know, tying for the demand. And then when I started with the soul work. 
so, sorry, when I started with the salt water, then I really needed help. And then, of course, because at that point, I wanted to start to sell, re, you know, retail, uh, uh, wholesale to other fly shops. So I, I felt like that I was going to waste my time being in a fly shop. I needed I to go out there. I needed to know about more about the industry, get to know people. And I had, a, I had a different ideas. I want to, I want to create it more and more and more and more. So that's, I would say probably I kept the fly shop until 90, I don't know, 94, about three years, three, not even a four years. Yeah. And then I started basically to be on my own, uh, time flies commercial. Yeah, because if if you maybe if you didn't do that, you'd be stagnant in the learning curve as the the things that you wanted to do and and learn. Absolutely, and, absolutely. So that because, was, that was a, know, yeah exactly. I mean, absolutely. I, probably I will never uh, have done what I did it because, again, being out there talking with people and exchange information and understand what people wanted, what people needs. That is a is a is a plus, you know. Tremendous you investment. Know, look, these days there is a you know many talented out there. You know, there's many talented people. I mean, they beautiful can tie flies, but to me, when I first started, to me it was a very important to understand. Okay, I'm tying this fly, and this fish takes this fly. Why? What's the reason for? It? You know. Yeah. So I wanted to understand. And also, I wanted to understand when I did tie the flies and the fish didn't take the fly. There was a refusal. I said, okay, to me, these flies look very good. The color, What's going the on? Silhouette, yeah. Why the fish doesn't take this fly? So, to me, it was like uh, this, you know? Yes, okay, yes. I have to figure out why. It's I wanted to go in depth. Yeah. Fantastic. We have a comment from uh, one of the fans. Uh, this is uh, Eduardo. Ribeiro, a good friend of mine who fishes a lot for peacock bass. And uh, Enrico, uh, I got to tell you something. Uh, peanut butter is flies are the best ones to catch peacock bass here where I live. I always have in my fly box. It's a pleasure to hear you and my friend Zuri. Fantastic. Thanks, buddy. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you very yeah, he's, much. A, he's a fan of your products. Thanks. That's That's for sure. So, great. You went out there closed the shop and got to learn more in depth uh, about the, thing that, the things that you wanted to discover, the, fly, the flies in the field and all those sorts of things involved in, in that. And what happened? Well, and then what happened? <laughs> and then uh, basically, you know, more demand of the fly uh, that, that I was creating. And uh, that's when I had to go overseas and start to, you know, basically do my own things because um, when I started with the saltwater flies production, uh, I was covered over here, the northeast of, of the United States, uh, mainly for stripers and bluefish, little tunas and uh, sea trout and, and, and fish like that. And then uh, little by little, uh, the flies that I was uh, offering in my, you know, on the Northeast start to shift down all the way down to Florida. And, and here, that's when everything is start to explode, meaning, okay. okay, you know, the peanut butter is going to work phenomenal for Rotarpon and the uh, Schnook. But now we have a permit. Now we have a bonefish. And, and, and now what? You know, now How can we solve there, those? Now I know there is a the fisher over there, and I need the flies like crabs and shrimps. So that's when I it got very exciting to me, and started to you know, uh, you New know, challenge. To, dig, to dig in on more information about the, the kind of fishery, and learn about why you know uh, to. And, 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 I mean, look. Until these days, when it comes to crabs, it's like a mystery because we all know how difficult it is when it comes to permit. I mean, those those fish drive you know drive everybody nuts and they drive me crazy anyway. But 
but I, so, I did it, you know, I, I did it. And then, of course, after that, the, the whole thing expanded uh, from Florida to the Panhandles, Louisiana, Texas, that all the red fish that we have over there, the redfish and the sea trout and all yeah. of course the habitat on the area as well. So, I mean, basically through the years, it was it spread it through the United States. And then, of course, in time, it, you know, it went overseas and because the people travel and, the, you know, they, you cannot hide in that point, you know. Fantastic. 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 So back then, when you first tied the first patterns, was it the peanut butter, peanut butter, the first one? The first one I tied for salt water was the peanut butter. That uh, resembled the, the bunker part of the baby bunker we have here in, into the Long Island Sound. And the color of the fly is basically grayish, you know, and, and white pretty much. Yeah, grayish, it's a very dorsal, light, uh, yeah, and a little yeah, bit. The dorsal is a water. gray, light gray. And um, and one thing that I want to point out is um, the amount of the fibers I put into the flies. Uh, there we go. Those days, equal today to three flies, just to give an idea. Uh, people always ask me, you know, why my flies, they never come out like yours. And I know why. And without even asking any more questions, I said, because you put in too much fibers. Uh, how am I going to figure out that? Okay, listen, it's very simple. It, you know, it's not really that complicated. Besides the fact that it's a trial and error, it's a practicing, you know. I wasn't a burn knowing fly fishing. I learned. It took me time. So everybody, I think, is on the same boat. So basically, I say, when you roll in your fingers a little, uh, you know, the first, you know, amount of the fibers that you think is the right, um, quantity to apply to the hook, what you will do is split the bunch in a half and use only half. That will be your right amount to put in the fly. Fantastic. So that pretty, that pretty much will work. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, again, the, the balance of the fly is a very simple. Uh, when I started with the peanut butter, there was no other, no synthetic materials at all. So let uh, me just jump right in. Uh, did you sort of like made those materials yourself or uh, how, how did it, you come by those? What was the idea? Well, the idea was uh, basically, well, let me go back to one step. It's not yeah. that there was no synthetic materials those days. The only synthetic material those days available was the Ultra Air by D.H. Thompson. The um, fish hair, we, those are the straight fibers, the straight nylon fibers, okay? Okay. That's what so they are. For big fibers that you dismantle? No, and, basically, no. basically, those fibers, they are, they are excellent to tie like a sand deal pattern, very thin, long um, fly. Okay. But when it comes to a bunker, to create the body on a bunker, a wide profile, those fibers, they're not, they, they will not do the job. So for me, it was, okay, those fibers, I can do sand deals, but I cannot do the bunker, which is a wide profile. So uh, now what? So that's when you start to go around and looking, and then when something clicks in and you find it, what you find it, I say, okay, I think I get it. So I was lucky enough to find these specific materials but it wasn't just that. It took a, a lot, lot of work. testing. It, yeah. it, took, it took a lot of work, you know, to perfect it for the purpose that I needed, you know, for the, for the flies, for the fly yeah. fishing. So it was a long process, you know, find the right, you know, find the right colors, do the right colors, do the, the texture under the fibers, the thickness of the fibers and so forth and so on. So Perfect. it wasn't as something that, uh, you know, it just happened overnight, you know. Yeah. Uh, it took years before I perfected. So we're going back over the um, early, early 90, you know, in 90, 91, when I had those first fibers in my hand. And that's Fantastic. when I started to work. So we're going back over, you know, what, 25 years plus, you know, it didn't start yeah. yesterday. 
And then, yeah. you know, of, of course, today, you know, you have, uh, there is a gazillion, you know, fibers out there in the world. Uh, but my, what really makes me happy is that I started something that nobody did it. Uh, and, uh, and something that people today uh, really can go fishing and uh, they can catch the fish and they can create it, whatever they really want to create. That really, that's what really make me happy. And uh, absolutely, you know, again, there is a, so many talented fly ties out there that can do yeah. crazy things. And uh, I'm very happy to see that because I give them the tools, you know. Oh, yeah, and, that's that's you know, completely part of your okay, legacy. This is the tool, yeah. now show me what you can do with it, you know. Big impact. Did you switch the key for synthetic yes, materials? absolutely. Fantastic. It's... Fantastic. Uh, so back to, back then in the day, uh, it, it, when you opened the shop, it was Enrico Puglisi's fly shop, and then you, the flies were in Enrico No, I, I, I give the name of the practical fly shop because I was, a, I was and I still am a, a practical person. You know, I, I don't tie, let's say, I don't tie your flies because it is a beautiful flies or because it looks phenomenal because it requires a lot of work and so forth and so on. I'm very practical. I tie yeah. a fly, that will do the job for me. I, I really don't care if it doesn't look good. I really don't care if, uh, you know, if the material is not what I really want or whatever, but I needed to tie a fly that really can fool that fish. Rather yeah. if it's uh, a striper or a bluefish or a tarpon or a bonefish or whatever, you know what I mean? And that's <laughs> what it really, you know. It is about, yeah. Fantastic. There's a fan here. He, he, he said those words in, in Portuguese. I'm going to translate them to you. Uh, fantastic, Rodrigo. Uh, those fibers are the best in the market. The Enrico Puglisi fibers. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. This is a fly tire from Brazil, professional fly tire. Oh, thank, good thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, pretty cool. So, as for... Uh, so then, it was about the 90... 92, 93, you were tying the flies and you were selling them. And Correct. Fl Florida, it, by the time it was Enrico Puglisi's flies, right? By the time, yes. In fact, uh, you know, the, the first fly that really had a huge impact down in Florida, it was the black and purple. The peanut butter black and purple that okay. everybody, everybody these days knows the black and purple flies. Everybody catches, uh, you know, a lot Love of tarpon. Fish. It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter where it doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter what species you you fish for. Uh, the black and purple is do, always doing the job. You know, it, honestly, these days, I really don't. When I go fishing, I don't use the black and purple that much anymore because I know I will catch the fish. So I experiment, still experimenting and Testing, doing something yeah. different. I say, okay, how am I gonna do that? Uh, so Florida basically. Uh, this fellow, uh, Zeke, is a captain down in Florida, in Boca Grande. Uh, he went across the black and purple fly, the big one, the three, the three yacht, which is about five and a half inch long. Okay, okay. And uh, I see this fellow uh, ordering those flies for me, and then, uh, but he never say anything. Of what for? You know what I mean? So, and then the black and purple, and then he said, okay, what about if you, you know, if can you do that color for me? What about if you can do this color for me, the color combination? So I was doing that. And the Zik Sikula, actually, his name is, he kept secrets for about a year. He didn't share them. He didn't share <laughs> that fly. Hey, he, share my patterns. He, I he, sell he did not more. share it with nobody. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody, you know, every, all his colleagues, captain. Uh, they really wanted to know, yeah. what, you know, what, what was, was going on. What's going on? And he didn't share it. I mean, it was a so secret because, of course, you know the way captains are. If you are the best, if you if your client they catch a lot of fish, well, he, business is good, right? Yeah, so yeah. Secret. And then, uh, as, you know, one year later or so, he could not keep that secret anymore because, of, you know, even the client now they want to they were sharing. know where the fly is coming from. So they find out about me with the black and, pork, uh, black and purple, the peanut butter. 
and that's how the thing really start to spread them out. Fantastic. About that that specific pattern, did you uh, was it uh, a mimic of a specific fish, or it was so just? I, let let me give you the a little a little roundup on these flies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Those days, uh, I I used to fish um, basically at night time uh, for stripers and wading out, you know, with my boots. And uh, at night at night time, you do need a dark fly basically because the fish will see that better yeah, yeah. so the black and purple was the color combination i did it to fishing at night for striped bass so now <clears throat> all of a sudden you know one day uh fishing at night and the, the tide is right the fish are there and i catch fish catch fish and all of a sudden you turn around and there's a daylight but the fish still biting with the fly, black and purple. So, and then at some point when I, things start to slow down a little bit, and I say to myself, wait a minute. I mean, the sun is up, and this fish, they still nail this fly. I mean, what's going on? So that was a question I asked to myself. You see, I don't like to say, oh, you know what? I did the black and purple because I know that fish, you know, those fish, they're going to take yeah, it. Yeah, it they, was. It's a lie. You know, sometimes thing, things happen, and then you think about it, then you start to to figure out and say, okay, you know what? What about this? Or what about that? So, and that's when I kind of discovered that the fly, not only was, uh, you know, deadly at night time, but during the day, it was even better. But it, okay. made no, it, it didn't make no sense to me. <laughs> it was know, challenging the science. Why, <laughs> you know, <laughs> be so very productive, you know, during the day. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happened with the, the captain, Zeke, down in Florida. I mean, the tarpon fishing is during the day. If you don't have a sun, if you have no light, you cannot go fishing for those fish. And it was just killed those fish. I mean, unbelievable. Fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. Um, so, uh, for, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs that want to adventure in the fly fishing market, would you have any advices that you'd like to share with them? Uh, well, the advice, um, what, can, what kind of advice I can give it to, but today the market <clears throat> It's really wide open, and there is a very uh, there's a too much competition. Um, I mean, ev 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 how can I say? There is a too many people, too many companies out there. They're putting out these synthetic materials, and that synthetic materials, and that synthetic materials. So it's not it's not easy to figure out, okay, how am I going to succeed to that? Okay? If you want to be in this in this game, uh, you need to be ready to, to... You need to be ready for a lot of disappointment. Let's put it this way. Because the people are used to something and it's not really easy to change that. But also there is a lot of people that want to, you know, what is new, until they realize, they figure out, okay, you know what? This is not really going to work for me. So it all depends what kind of product you want to put them out there. That's the main thing. And you got to be pretty much open and honest with the people. Because today I see a lot of gimmicks, for instance. You know what I mean? I see so many gimmicks, it's not even fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. I could create, a, I could create another three or four different fibers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I could do yeah. that very easy. Yeah. But I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that because I know there is no need for that. You know, I will deceive my, you know, my customers. There is no need for that. And I keep what, you know, I keep what I have, it, what I created, you know, 25 plus years ago, which till these days they are, you know, I perfected through the years, don't get me wrong, but. Till those days, a lot of people, they love the fibers. They try other fibers. I mean, this is a free country. Don't get me wrong. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But but the beauty is that the fact that you have a lot of people, they can back to, 
to me and they say, Enrico, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I swear to God, I got to be honest with you. you know, I tried this fibers from this guy. I tried that fiber from the other guy. I tried the brush from the other fellow over there. But in reality, I had to go back in your stuff because <laughs> it, re it really works. I mean, and I'm, you know, I have no reason to lie that uh, I've been out there for a very long time. And uh, I created a product that really made the difference. So if I have a, something that really made the difference, what reason do I have to ruin the product? Oh, yeah, you know I mean? definitely. And, as, and as... again, in it, there is a, so many gimmicks out there. And gimmicks are, uh, you know, gimmicks are like emotional. They're growing overnight. And then they, you know, two, three days later, they're gone. You know, I've been out there for a very long time. That's the beauty, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, um, so we have some comments here. Hello, Enrico. Best synthetic materials on the market. No doubt about that. Silver style. And um, so there's one. one so about that, about that question that I, that I, that I made earlier. Um, in a broad, in a broad uh, extension, as for the fly fishing industry itself, uh, fly tying, maybe manufacturing right. other products. One uh, insight, as you've experienced it as an entrepreneur, you said you got to be prepared to receive a lot of punches, let's say that. <laughs> a lot of disappointment, exactly. Exactly. So, because, you see, if you, if you want to be out there, it's a one thing if you want to sell whatever the market already, already uh, offer. So you will distribute, you know, specific product. So if you want to be on the market, you know, you'll do it. And that will require a huge investment and you have to build, you know, uh, a, a, a really, you know, a clientele. But if you, if you come in, if you have a one, one product or two products that you think that is a dynamite or whatever, one or two products that in our days, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it because we already have a, so many products, you know what I mean? And people get lost, you know, many times they get, they get lost in a glass of water. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, that's the truth. And so as an entrepreneur these days, I see it, it, it could be a little bit difficult. I'm not saying possible, but it could yeah. be very difficult. And they require a lot of dedication, require a lot of work, and you got to be out there uh, and uh, more than anything else, what it really requires is a lot of humility. If you don't have that, then it, it, it cannot happen. Fantastic. You know Let mean? me. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Fantastic. So about the countless species that you went out for fishing and testing your flies, uh, uh, is there one or right nowadays specifically that that draws your attention, challenges you? Challenge you challenges you uh, a little bit more. Uh, would you like to point out one that you are most favorable to you nowadays, or of a, there... of a specific fly? You mean for a specific fish that you'd like to try ah, for, for a specific fish? Yeah. Well, uh, my 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 passion is a tarpon. Is a no question about that. Uh, I I I go fishing for tarpon anytime. But what it really drives me crazy are permit. Uh, permit, uh, that is uh, something that every time I go fishing for permit, it's like, you know, be, we're banging our head like that. And uh, <laughs> and most of the time, they're the winner. I'm the loser. <laughs> I got to be, be honest with you. And that's what it really makes me going and, you know, keep on thinking uh, about the fly. Uh, but after all these years, when it comes to that specific uh, fishery, I think what is um, the most important thing is the presentation of the flies than the fly himself. Okay. Uh, and uh, in, um, in the majority of the cases, everyone that go fishing for permit, as soon as they see the permit, you know, approaching, they shake in. They check in, and then when you're ready to do the cast, everything goes wrong. That line oh, is yeah. still around you, and the fight. I mean, it's one of those things, and uh, and that's what I like about about that.
uh, tarpon, uh, I'm, I'm cool because I know what it's all about it. Uh, and I know how to deal with them. The same language already. Yes, yes. We, we speak the same. You know, we, we see each other, we exchange opinion. You know, they're watching me, <laughs> I'm watching them. It's, it's a something really unbelievable. To me, to me, those fish, when you see those fish close by your boat, and, you know, when they surface, you know, they, and they, they, they're looking at you, you know, they're talking with you. I mean, it's a something unbelievable. Uh, permit, on the other hand, oh, <laughs> they are a nightmare. They are a nightmare. But I'm still going. I'm still oh, going. Yeah. I'm still going. And still doing something different on the fly. But I know I have to get better into the casting, into the presentation. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I, I did went to, uh, it was Yucatan once. I did. And uh, just a little adventure. And there was a tournament that was going on of about 30 boats on the water and they were trying to fish for permit. And during that week, they didn't get so many good results. It was about, I believe you're called free fish. They caught the whole week. Free fish? Yeah. They, they said that, but I don't know if it was one of the guys that said, or mm -hmm. I'm like, this is my first time here. This is my first time chasing fishes in flat waters and stuff. We don't have that in Brazil. So um, I'm not going to go for permit this time, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to go for permit this time. Why I'm going to be a little bit more humble. I, I believe I, if I was chasing for permit, I, I'd lose the days I, I had of fishing because it's so challenging, right? And I just wanted to catch some bonefish for the first time and, and uh -huh. barracudas and those other fishes. And, Tarpon and I already had some experience in the northeast because we, we do have a good amount of tarpons in the in the mangroves. Not not side fishing for them. We don't have that much here uh, in the mangroves. Yeah. But I tell you that uh, one day I was just walking by the beaches and this huge permit, he was just, you know, about one meter from the, the beach and he was like, Uh, turning around to eat some stuff in, nearby the reefs. And I'm like, okay, the car was nearby. So I kind of just turned myself, got my rod real fast, real geared up. And when I turned back, absolutely vanished. I was like, oh my God. That was like, that was the first time I really saw permit mm -hmm. up close and, and Beautiful fish, beautiful fish, yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. So I got I got to go back for more eventually. And 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 and, and recalling that, what is your uh, favorite location to go for permit nowadays? Uh, there are, there I, are have, I have a few. Comes... I have a two locations. One is uh, Ascencio Bay in Mexico. Yeah. And the other one is in Belize. Uh, in Belize, okay. In Belize, I've been uh, I've been going in Belize uh, longer than I have in Ascencio Bay. Uh, in Mexico, and um, I like both, and both places, they have, a, you know, good fishing, uh, good fish, you know, really good size of fish, and uh, they still challenging fish, there's no question about it. So those are, my, those are my two, my two favorite spots. Fantastic. Uh, do you have any advices for uh, newcomers into fly fishing really so the person looked and okay i want to try fly fishing any tips um never never done fly fishing ever never done it never done for anyone wants to do fly fishing wants to fly fish okay my advice is the first thing they should do they should really find a location where they can teach them fly casting Uh, if you try to do this in your own with the video tapes and things like that, yes, you could do it, but it's going to take a very long time and a lot of frustration. So my advice is that go and take classes of someone that teaches a fly, fly casting. That will be your first thing to do. It. Because once you know, once you learn to do the fly casting, 
then you can start to learn the presentation of the fly himself. Depends on what kind of fishing, you know, you fish for. Uh, rather if it's a permit, bonefish, uh, peacock, uh, bass, or, uh, or whatever. But the, the first thing you really should do, you should learn how to fly cast. Because if you don't know how to do that, it's very, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, that's, that's the best advice I can give you. Fantastic. Um, and for the events that you have uh, been to, um, do you have any uh, specific events you like to share that you that you are like that you that you like really to go and you recommend for someone who wants to, to join these events and learn a little bit more about fly tying, about you know the the fly fishing itself and. Yeah, sure. Well, Specifically about fly tying. If well, there's... If for the fly tying, you know, that's another thing that my advisor for, you know, for the fellow that they want to learn the fly fishing is the first thing they should do is, you know, see if there is any clubs, fly fishing clubs in the area. Join the, the fly fishing club because usually the fly fishing clubs, they're doing fly tying, they're doing fly casting and everybody's helping each other. If they go fishing together. So that's it's something that you really should do it. Uh, that is your tool to learn how to. Uh, also, the other one is the uh, the fly fishing show that we ran here in the United States. As you know, you, you've been there a couple of times already, I presume, or no? No, unfortunately, I haven't been. I just no, met Ben Firminski oh, uh, and okay. got him. So that, that's on my wish list for sure. Okay. I want to go there. Yeah. Right. So any any fly fishing show uh, for consumers, that is another good advice that, you know, I will give and to learn. Um I'm pretty sure even down in Brazil, you guys must do something like that. You know, getting you guys are gathering together as a club and teaching, fly time, fly casting. Is that correct or not? Yes, that's correct. We have uh, even a Brazilian association of fly fishing, that, uh, but it's very strong in the south. Now, as, as we move into the country, we do have, we do have little clubs, uh, not very well uh, Uh, uh -huh. let's say expressive but we do we do i i myself uh run a little if i can say that it's a club it's not really a club but i try to get as many people as involved and in, 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 and there's a there's a big group in whatsapp that we talk there's about 140 mm -hmm. people and i invite uh, a, a good amount of people to come to my house in fly tie so that's the way i can i can share a little bit about uh what i've experience and also have others teach me and share the experience even with newcomers as well so yes. that that's in the scale that we can do it's very uh good for everybody absolutely right, right, right. absolutely yeah yeah but these days uh, i mean uh, as we all know these days is very easy you know putting together a bunch of friends from any part of the world you know and you do online like we do right now And you can, ex you, you can exchange when it comes to fly tying and, you know, all these little tricks that you can use, uh, which is, you know, today, today is much easier than my days. My days, I didn't have the luxury. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, it was a totally uh, different story. <laughs> including on your uh, webpage, uh, epflies.com, you do have a nice collection of videos, instructional videos. Yes, uh, we do. And there's a subscription uh, uh, for... Uh, more detailed or is it still running because i, the, I remember the, I... The, the, the subscription is still running and due to this um, you know COVID time that we added you know it's a free access you know everybody is a is welcome to watch all those videos there is a i believe a hundred videos available uh that you know everyone can enjoy and uh yes uh, to the that's to my website And as well, you know, everybody that is, uh, you know, wishes to get it, their hands in the EP product, they can buy it directly from our website. Um, we ship it pretty much worldwide, you know, doesn't matter where, uh, no problem. And uh, my goal is, you know, what it was from, from the beginning, pretty much. Um, create it and offer a quality product, number one. Uh, a product that makes sense and um, 
you know, look, it took me a year to build, you know, my trust with my uh, customers. And uh, it took very, very many, you know, a long time to do that. And how you gain the, you know, the trust when you do have a product that really is doing, you know, what it's supposed to do. And uh, the more you pay, you're getting something in return. You know what I mean? And again, uh, I don't create the gimmicks. I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't create the gimmicks just for you, you know, to sell it, you know, two or three of this or four or five of those because that is not bringing me anything. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it, that's a something that I built through the years and I want to keep that way. You know, I don't want to uh, deceive anyone. And, uh, and these days I'm very proud to say that everyone that has been buying from us um, online, uh, they've been extremely, extremely happy about it because I was on the other side many years ago and I know what it's all about. It. And uh, you, you know, you don't want to, be a, a big disappointment to people you know what i mean because if you make it that the fly fisherman happy and if you can help if you can tell them if you can teach them if you can share it with them you know and do all those good things you know those people they they will embrace you you know forever and that's what we really want you know you want to uh, my goal always been to create a product that people will be happy and they can have a use of, you know, every little bit of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not just the product. It's a legacy, really. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what is one of the most iconic moments that you can recall uh, as a fishing moment? You know, fishing moment that really... <laughs> come any any come i know there's a lot but one that, that comes to mind so you right know, now you wanted me to tell you a fishing story right <laughs> <laughs> two hours or event no, no i'm just kidding rico i'm no. not gonna bother you no, that much i i i have a one that uh, probably actually there is two and okay. i cannot really pick which one all right one was all right with tarpon and one was with uh with a permit uh, okay. Let me, let me do the top one first. I'm gonna make it very quickly. Okay. So okay. I was in the in the in, in the panhandle fishing uh, from a captain, and uh, of course, so his captain telling me that okay, we got a string of fish coming at 11 o'clock. Get ready. He sees this fish even before I can barely see those fish. Okay, I see the fish. I'm getting ready. Cast, cast. I cast it. I start to do my, uh, you know, my uh, my retrieving, and then you see the living fish, you know, charging to the flies. As you see this fish, open his mouth, it closes his mouth, and basically pushes the flies away, and not grab it. He was be able to grab that fly, or saying, "Okay, keep on, keep on stripping." You know, it was a strip. It wasn't not really a casting. It was a keep. so again. The fish is he misses the fly. Where is the fly? So here's the fly. It goes again. He opened his mouth and again, close his mouth and he's pushing these flies again. And he keep on doing that. So that was the second time. And sure, I mean, you have to understand the mechanic of this, what happened. And this is a true story. I mean, swear to God. And you have to know also the speed of those big fish, you know, talking about 120, 130, 150 wow. pounds fish. Yeah. The speed that they go is so... He misses the fly the, the first time. He misses the fly the second time. Now he approaches the fly again, and he go to close him out, and he misses the flies for the third time. So now at the point, those fish basically all of a sudden say, "I have no more. I have no more room where to strip the fly." All of a sudden, these fish they see the boat, and it's like a tractor trailer. Though, so they kind of put the brakes on it, and they stop it one right after the hour. And then you see the water splashing on the boat, and you see this fish just stopping like a tractor fair. One goes left, one goes right, and those fish just disappear. So the living fish missed the flies three times in a row. How did he do that? I have no clue. Not even the captain could figure out. I mean, it was incredible. So the second yes. one was, it was unbelievable. But the second one is even better. It was uh, with the permit. I was in Belize. 
And uh, this fellow captain, a good friend of mine at this point, we know each other over, was it, 12 years or now? Anyway, uh, we're approaching this uh, coral, and yep. then uh, I see this, you know, this shape of a, of a fish. And then I said, okay, that's a permit. And then uh, Dob, his name is Dob. I said, Dob, do you see that the fish over there? Eh, you know, that is a, a cooler. So, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. No he, keep, he keep on pulling the boat and then uh, I said Dob did you see the fish over there he said holy shit that's you know that's a permit I said he stopped the boat right away and then he was a really big coral and you see this fish you know on 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 the you know on this coral and uh, basically said okay let's see what this fish is doing and yeah. we see this fish coming out of the coral to the left and coming in again. Coming out to the right and coming in again. I said, what is he doing? He was going in and out, in and out. I said that it must be something under the, under the coral because he was right on top of it, you know. There must be something over there that he wants to run, but he's watching because he's gonna grab it. I say, okay, let's get ready, we'll do this. I say, and the dog said to me, you know, okay, we cannot really go any closer than that because they will see it. I said, I don't know if I can make this cast, you know, to that fish over there because it's only one cast. That's why I said, Dub, I don't know. I, I really don't know. You know so God damn it, said that you're going to make that cast and you're going to, you know, you're going to catch, catch that, fish. that fish. So sure enough, I mean, that was a pure luck. I'm not saying I was the best because I'm not really a great caster. You were inspired. So, <laughs> I was inspired, exactly, I was inspired by them. So drop the flies, uh, the fly drops down, and then you see this fish coming out of the, you know, on top of the curl, it grabbed the fly, and that was, you know, it was a fantastic. I mean, it's fantastic. one of those things. Yeah. That's Did you cool. get to land him? Did you get to huh? land him? Did you land that fish? If I uh, let it go? No, if you landed him. Did you oh, land yeah, him? We landed the, we landed the fish. Look, you know, lucky enough, we landed the fish, and uh, and then of course take your pictures and let it go. And, fantastic. You know, do do fantastic. do the do, do the right thing, you know. Yes, do the right thing by the fish. That's great, great. Thanks for sharing those two stories. Pleasure, pleasure, all mine. Yeah, yeah. So, um, before we wrap up, would you like to uh? send a message for our future listeners and if, if of course for everybody who's watching us well uh, my message uh, is it's a very simple um the fly fishing is a beautiful sport you should embrace it for what it is um you should really go fishing as much you can and uh tie your own flies tie your own flies because uh, tying the flies and catching the fish with the flies that you're tying it make you feel a million dollars, okay? And uh, why I say tie the fly? Because that will put your hands and your brain to work. And it's good to do it because today, unfortunately, we spend a lot of time on this telephone thing over here. You know, we have only two fingers that we know how to work and not the entire hand. So you should put that telephone on the side every, every once in a while and tie the flies and go fishing and enjoy. Go out there. Unfortunately, these days with this COVID that we have it, you know, we got to be extremely careful. It's unfortunate, but, and share, you know, I say to everyone, whatever you know, share. Uh, that's what I've been doing all my life. You know, I, I've been, you know, I've been sharing what I learned through the years. And um, I'm very, very happy for what I did it. And I'm very happy that, you know, the name of, uh, is a recognize out there that the you know we have a, a product that really makes sense and we have a quality product uh, and uh, you know most of all the, uh, the advice I can give it to everyone is that you know when you go out there be respectful of the nature you know what I mean if that's the best you know and try do the best you can to preserve it for future generations and uh and uh, i am here available to anyone uh anyone uh, needs uh advice anybody that uh, would like to ask me a question or whatever you know by all means you know flies uh, 
materials, product, time, you name it. Fantastic. And who knows, maybe one of these days so you're going to see my face down there. We're going to do the, the parrilla, oh. if you call oh. it that, a parrilla. And, uh, you know, we'll do a little time. We can do a little time. We'll get together. We'll do, tie a couple of flies and then we'll go fishing if we have a time. If not, so be it. <laughs> Well, we will do it. We will do all of those. I w I'll make sure to remember you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as soon uh, as soon it will be, you know, safe to travel. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be coming down that way. Uh, I've been going down to Argentina and Tierra del Fuegos. I haven't gone in, in, uh, into the Amazon yet uh, to do what are you guys doing, but uh, as soon. Actually, in October, I was supposed to go for uh, Dorado, and oh, yeah? I, I had to cancel. You know, because you're going this, to you know, Simoni, Bolivia. It, yeah, I was, was... going to go in Bolivia. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so um, it is what it is, and we have to deal yeah. with it. But let's hope yeah, we'll for pass. The yeah, yeah, we'll pass. Absolutely. Enrico, thank you very much for coming. You're very welcome, and thank, thank you for inviting me, and uh, perhaps we will see each other some, some other time. We'll see each other soon. Fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. You're uh, very welcome. Have a great night. Take okay. some rest. Bye-bye yep. now. Bye-bye.